Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment then the links to our social media are coming up on the screen now. Today we are here at the Middleton Railway for a walk around to show you some of the things that they've got here and kind of give you an idea of what to expect on a visit. First off, I guess we should cover where we are. This is Moore Road. This is the current headquarters of the Middleton Railway. And the Middleton Railway has the distinction of being the oldest continually operating railway in the world. It also has the distinction of being the first preserved standard gauge railway in the world, following behind the Talaclin and beating the Bluebell. Most people believe the Bluebell was the first standard gauge preserved railway, but it was actually this one here. There has been a railway presence running through Middleton down into Leeds since 1758, which is, for those of you who aren't sure, a really long time ago. In fact, it predates steam. Steam engines came here and made their appearance in 1812. The steam engines designed by Matthew Murray, they worked here. The very development of rail mounted steam engines happened around here and worked on these rails. There was a colliery that way and that way and over there businesses used the railways. They were the lifeline. This is before the roads really took over and everything went by road and lorries. Goods came in by rail and left by rail. There were many railway networks and connections through here. There is the main line that way currently, but there was also a main line that way running across. It was a huge network. The main point was at the far end of the line, there was a colliery. And that's where most of the goods came from and traveled. And this end eventually fell into, well, less use as most of the goods went out the colliery and up to the main line, which is now where the main road is. In 1960, something a little strange happened. A group of university students, who were the, the railway group, decided that as this bit wasn't being used, they would attempt to run trains. So in the summer, for one week only, they managed to persuade Hunslet to lend them a locomotive and they borrowed what's effectively a tram, but they called it a rail car from the Swansea and Mumble railway. I think basically the only reason that's called a rail car is because it ran on a railway and not a tramway and they ran a passenger service. But this was not the main thing. What this group of students did is they managed to run a service running scrap out from Clayton's yard over there and running other supplies to the industrial estate. It wasn't for another nine years before they started actually running a regular passenger service alongside the freight. It's absolutely bonkers. They were running, a group of enthusiasts were running a freight train. And what's even more mad is the freight train lasted up to the 1980s. That's mad. It's only kind of in recent history that they stopped running commercial freight with things like awaits coming up the line and being used. It was a proper, proper organisation, which means that the industrial heritage of this railway actually really has continued up to recent times. It really is steeped and ingrained in the very fabric of the railway. So with the rough history gone over. Let's have a look around Moor Road and what there is here. Let's have a look through this. And this is something that is publicly accessible. This is the, the engine house, the big shed. And it's wonderful to have a museum like this where everything's undercover. So first up here is Hunslet Sweet P, which is one of my all time favorite locomotives, smaller and less powerful than my own Ruskin 48. Then over here, this is Slower States number three, which is a 
Hudswell Clark. Now this is quite an important engine to me because it's very similar, I think it's a little bit bigger, you know, like an inch here, an inch there, than the locomotive we're restoring at the Mid Suffolk Light Railway, my, my home railway. So this gives me a good idea of what it's going to look like when it's reassembled. And frankly, it's a very weird looking machine. Outside cylinders, a saddle tank like this, exposed smoke box, it's, it's just all a bit strange and kind of beautiful in its strangeness. I do like that. On this side here, we have Carol, which is a Huntwell Clark a diesel mechanical locomotive. And I love this shape of engines of this kind of generation when they hover chimney. Diesels that hover chimney just have so much more character to them. And it's also one of these lovely things that he's got its gearbox underneath the front end here. So you've got a gearbox under there and then the jack shaft at the front. It's the wrong way round compared to most other locomotives. But it's a very easily recognizable and a very pretty engine. And then behind it here, we have another Huntwell Clark this is Mary, which is like the big big sister, if you will. Again, massive great bulge here for the gearbox and the jack shaft. So yeah, this one is the, the bigger version of that. But it's quite nice to have them parked side by side to really appreciate what they are. And also another working locomotive. This side here, we've got Brooks number one. It's a very, a very nice locomotive, but also currently in ticket. Over here, we have John Alcock. Now, this locomotive is the first locomotive that the Middleton Railway actually got hold of. And it's really wonderful to have the thing they started off still here. So this is currently stopped for repairs, but it has been working and it's just lovely. And also, it's really nice having a genuine locomotive that's up in LMS livery. I mean, really dates it beautifully. This is another one that it's really quite special for me. This is a Huswell Clark Canal long tank. Well, it's a long tank and it worked for the Manchester Shipping Canal Company. So it's something that sometimes gets confused with the old MSLR. Now, this thing is very similar to the tank engines that originally we ran on the Mid Suffolk Light Railway. The tanks are slightly different, in slightly different dimensions, but it's pretty much almost as near as we're going to get to the original engines on the Mid Suffolk Light Railway. So for me personally, it's quite nice to see this. It's a very pretty engine. Over this side, this is a Fowler called Harry. Now, this thing was working until recently, where unfortunately it was the result of some vandalism and it's now stopped awaiting some time to actually repair what was damaged on it, which is a real shame because it was something in traffic. And always a shame when this kind of thing happened. Now, this is a, an interesting one. This is a Kitson by, oh, when I don't, this has not running preservation. This one has not running preservation. So that's kind of special to have a locomotive which is yet to run. So one day in the future, there'll be a huge moment, but this has its first steaming. Now, you may be able to notice that it's in a, a somewhat tired condition, which is helping to kind of emphasize the amount of effort it goes to bring one of these things back from scrap condition. Some of it's actually quite nice because it went off to locomotion where the work was started on it and now it's come back here for the work to be finished off. And it's sat in here at the moment just to keep it dry and out of the weather until a space is freed up in the workshop. Over here we have a Peckett. Now this is interesting to have here because the whole idea behind the collection here at Middleton is because we're in the middle of Leeds, a Leeds built engine. Everything else we've seen so far that way was built in this city and some of it the Hunslows were built literally just down the road which are quite an amazing thing it's so nice to have them near home this one is a Peckett and Peckett's were built in Bristol so it doesn't really fit into this kind of uh, ideology uh, the reason it's here is because there was a member of the railway who owned it and wanted to bring it here and the railway wanted a locomotive that worked and said yes the thing to notice about it is, is that the cab and the footplate are all significantly lower than the running board there down here rather than as you'd expect up here and the reason for this is as you can see on the little picture over there it was used to shunt wagons through a coal tipper and so it had to fit through there hence it's cut down uh, size which give it this a very weird kind of look and it's a, a very weird thing but also kind of kind of cute Behind it here, we have another Hudswell Clark, Hudswell Clark 040. And the thing I like most about this is this absolutely bonkers logo it's got on the side of it. I, that's very, very cool. I like that a lot. Very pretty little locomotive. And then here we have another curiosity. This is not a locomotive built in Leeds. In fact, this is not a locomotive built in this country. This is Danish and it's very similar to Tinkerbell. That's at the Neen Valley Railway only. Tinkerbell's an 060 and this is an 040. And this is owned by the Steam Power Trust who also own 1310, which is over there somewhere. 
And the reason behind this was when they kind of started, you could buy locomotives on the continent that worked for not a huge amount of money. And they quite fancied having a continental engine, which was recently overhauled when they bought it. So it came over here and it was the flagship locomotive at Middleton for many years and appeared in all kinds of media. And now it's sat in the here awaiting its turn in the restoration queue. But it's really nice to be able to see something different and it really shows how the continent did stuff in a very different way. For instance, this is a well tank locomotive, so the water tank is down there. And everything else we did, we didn't really do well tanks, at least not as much as this, but just everywhere, the way the pipes are worked, the size of the dome, the design of the chimney, everything about it is so very different. It's so weird to have eccentrics on the outside. There's most of the stuff that we've built and everything else that we've seen in here, it's got all the motion on the inside. Motion on the outside, I mean, it's so much easier to work on because you don't have to climb inside, but just aesthetically, it's very different to things like this. This is another Hartwell Clark, uh, the bigger version of that one. And again, this is quite a cracking size of locomotive, isn't it? I, mean, I am impressed with this. Built in 1917, and yeah, that's a, a decent sized thing. I mean, it's nice walking through this collection, being able to compare lots of different designs and different generations of locos. And here we have a Fowler diesel. Now, this is very similar to the one we've got at the Mid Suffolk Light Railway. In fact, we have a working version. This one, this one is waiting its turn and it's been all labelled up to help people understand what everything is, which is a lovely thing. But it looks very smart. And again, I love these ones that have got a chimney because diesels with chimneys look fantastic. And nice copper on that, but very, very similar to our one. And then as we come to the, the start, I suppose, because you're normally walking from over there, we've got a section boiler off uh, Sir Berkeley, which helps give you an idea of what everything is. And it's all color coded nicely. So we have blue down here to show you that there'll be water in this space here. This is the inner firebox, this is the outer. There will be a fire in there, water here all boiling. These are the stays that hold it all together under the pressure. The steam will rise up to here and gather. And then it's got the steam passageway, which will go through the regulator and through all the way to the front of the cylinders. And then we've got here, the stays which hold the boiler together under the pressure and the fire tubes here which have been nicely painted to show fire and it's one of these things that helps to really explain how a steam engine works to people who haven't seen it or don't work on them and, and then around here we have the where it would be the smoke box steam comes out of here and all your hot gases come out of all the tubes here and we're going to talk a bit more about it later but with a 10-year overhaul all the tubes here have to come out and be replaced and uh, this boiler here is life expired it's it can't be done anything with and so a new boiler had to be made to replace this one. Over here we have some items which are on loan from the National Mining Museum with a couple of mining locomotives including this absolutely bonkers thing that's on a rack. So a rack locomotive so we can deal with decent gradients and a lovely photo here showing how they got the things into mines which is the reason for its rather squat uh, dim kind of dimension dimensions yes that's what I want which is a mad thing. And then this here, which is a Hunslet built, a leaked built mining tractor, which has awesome size wheels. I mean, you pull up into the McDonald's car park in this and you are going to get all the attention. Like this is proper bling, at least if I understand how these things work, this is cool. So that's a quick look around. Well, this quite, it's wonderful for a railway to have this kind of facility where they can have a load of locomotives on display for the public to be able to see them and also to protect them from the weather and all the, you know, rain and horrible things and everything to be kept clean and lovely but this is the kind of thing that you can come and see as a visitor to the Middleton Railway you can come here and wander through here next we're going to go to the kind of places that you can't see and have a, a look around the behind the scenes first up on our tour is the running shed where they keep their serviceable locomotives one of the lovely things about the running shed here at the Middleton Railway is the wall here engraved with all these names and these are all people and organisations that came together and donated a, a sizable amount of money to aid with the constructing of this. And so a wonderful way to commemorate everybody who helped be part of it and have their legacy live on for everybody else who comes here and is able to look at the wall and say thank you to all these people who've helped make, well, a very essential thing, a running shed possible. So in here we have Matthew Murray, which is just a absolutely wonderful little tank engine and just it's very typical of the Manning Wardle design they kind of this was the standard design that that Manning Wardle built kind of like this it's just very nice and he bears a lot of similarities with things like Whittington which is a Huntsville Clark but uh, 
it's, it's very similar in a lot of ways. The pipe work, the injectors are, are just very similar things. It's a beautiful kind of light railway locomotive. And then behind it, you have something that is very dear for me. As you're all aware, I am a locomotive driver and I'm a steam driver. And this is the engine that I became a driver on when it visited the Mid Suffolk Light Railway. This is what I got passed out on. So for me personally, she is very, very important to me. And this is an H class. And the design of this was then carried on by the LNER becoming the Y7. And at Mid Suffolk, we have the surviving sister to this, number 985 at Mid Suffolk Light Railway. So I drive the sister to this, the much younger sister, quite regularly. But uh, yeah, she really does have a special place in my heart. And being able to see her again is really just beautiful because it brings back a lot of happy memories being passed out. And with the running shed looked at, it was time to move on to the next location. We're now in one of the other storage sheds of the railway where they've got this amazing bright yellow monstrosity of a locomotive. And it's just, everything about it is strange. All of the proportions are off. It's very high, the buffer's very low. It was designed for one purpose, and that was moving a coke wagon back and forth in and out of the works. So it's got low buffer beams to deal with that. It's quite high for good visibility. And the most weird thing about it is the propulsion. It's an electric locomotive, but it's not like a battery locomotive like Titch that we featured ages ago on the channel. No, no, this had something that I can't quite comprehend. It had an electric cable that went in there, which was tethered to a point. It was, it, it was a tethered locomotive, which is just bonkers. So it went up the line and the wire came out with it, and then it got to the end of the line, and it came back and the cable retracted back in which is, I've never even heard of that. It's a bonkers thing, which obviously means it was very, very limited operationally and it could only work there. And once the work finished, it came in, it was donated to the Midland Railway and kind of forms part of the history. It's an important part of engine development. But it's one thing that will never be overhauled because you can't do it. It's not battery. And the Middleton Railway really doesn't want to have a, a, the cable running the whole way up the railway. And so it's, it's an important part of history, but it will remain a static exhibit forevermore. And just an utterly, utterly mad thing. Oh, while we're in here though, if you look down there at the rails, these are rails that were found on a, a dig in Leeds, and they date back from 1814, which was part of the railway network that ran in here, which really does help show how important industry and how long industry has been associated with Leeds itself. Oh, there, there is another thing with this. This is, the last standard gauge locomotive built in Leeds by any company other than Hunter. This was built by Greenwood and Batley. And it's the newest locomotive here, but quite an important thing that, well, Hunter kept making engines, but yeah, this is a really kind of signifies an end of an era of locomotive building in Leeds. Behind me, this, well, remains of a locomotive is 1684 of 1931 and it's a locomotive that has never run in preservation and it gives you some of the idea of the challenges that were faced by the pioneers of preservation when they bought engines from scrapyards and also the challenges that still face us today. I mean where do you even start with this? The smoke box is rotten, the chimney looks mm, pretty scabby, the tanks well there's a chance they might still hold water but the coal bunker is up there on top of the boiler, which that has definitely fallen apart. And the cab, well, the cab is falling apart as well. You can see the holes in it. And just the sheer amount of work required to restore this back to, well, even cosmetic condition is a countless amount of man hours. And then to overhaul it back to running, well, I mean, where, where would you start? It's such a massive project. And this is a tiny locomotive and it gives you some kind of idea of locomotives that came out of scrap yards that are running today, including big engines. The sheer amount of work to take something like this and make it like some of the other locomotives we saw inside the museum earlier. People put a lot of time and effort into this and we really should be thankful for it. And maybe one day, maybe this too will, will run. And that would involve moving it into the railway's workshop, which is the building on the left, and quite conveniently, the next place on our tour. So welcome to the workshop here at the Middleton Railway. And this is one of the places that you don't normally get to see. And part of the reason for this is to try and show you some of the a massive amount of work that goes into keeping railway heritage alive. Behind me here is number six. 
and this is an engine that has been under overhaul now for 20 years and finally is starting to come together having recently had its boiler come back costing 60,000 of your pounds and for those of you who don't know the overhaul process for a steam locomotive a boiler is good for 10 years before it needs to be taken out of the frames stripped down inspected and rebuilt which at the same time you take the opportunity to take everything else off on this engine so this has had everything here taken off it's the springs the wheels that come off all the rods the motion everything has been taken off and stripped down cleaned repaired remetalled in the case and now it's going back together with a new coat of paint but just this gives you the idea of the sheer amount of work that's needed for it to be well in this state and this is going back together but 20 years of hard graft to get it back to this stage and as you can see it's got some bits that are painted up so it's a uh, it's number six, and for that reason, it's painted in a green, very similar to a, a certain other locomotive. Behind it here, we have one of Midland Railway's projects that's coming together, and this is a Y1, an LNER Y1, presented here in British Railway livery. And it's superb. There are, I think, two Sentinels like this left in preservation, and this is the only one that worked for the LNER. And it has been a, a long project now to bring it back together again and put it back together and have it as a working, and it is now very close to being a operational locomotive and it well i mean just from an aesthetics point of view it looks absolutely stunning and these things are amazing because they are vertical boiler locomotives so a very small sentinel vertical boiler and then um, chain drive with the engine inside the cab there so it, they're, they're they're bonkers because I mean, have a look at this clambering up here we've got the engine is here that's your engine then the Boiler is here, so the farm's here, but then coal is all the way over here. So you've got to get your coal from over here, ferry it over here, and then chuck it down the big hole in the middle there. It's, it's a fascinating piece to get, and it's going to be a really interesting engine for the Middleton Railway to have running. So just something very different and very interesting. And the Sentinel has a unique shape. Nothing else was ever built, kind of built like this. And so they very easily recognizable and they were built as shunting engines they were geared so they could move very slowly but shift a decent amount of well a decent amount of weight and made them perfect moving around yards slowly moving lots of wagons and it really is a credit to the Middleton Railway that it's now back in this condition almost ready to go out and I for one am going to be very excited to see this back out as we kind of make our way over here we see just some of the sheer amount of tools just spanners of every conceivable size, because of course nothing in here is going to be metric. It's all going to be Imperial, but Wickworth and whatever the other ones are. There's very complicated reasons, but many, many, just spanners. And then around here we've got punches and chisels and all sorts of other things that we need. So there's lots of tools here that are obscure that we need to work on that you don't really use in modern day life. Metal cutters and all sorts. This here is very similar to the Hunslet I reviewed recently up in Scotland. Possibly exactly the same, maybe a little bit bigger, not sure. But this is now having its overhaul from industrial condition. It hasn't actually run in preservation yet, which is really exciting. And it's having a fair bit of work. It's having a repaint, a lot of new metal going into it. So that's going to go there. Now, this locomotive originally had flame proofing on it. So the exhaust went through a, basically a tank full of water to get rid of any sparks. So it had a bulge on one side where this was fitted. So they've removed the flame proofing because it doesn't need it anymore because it's not working in an oil refinery anymore and funnily enough people aren't that flammable. But it's going to keep the same style bonnet bulge to hold this, which is quite cool. And it's, uh, yeah, it's all coming together. It's going to finish off in this kind of blue colour. There's a bit of variance here, but it's going to basically look... <coughs> that colour and it will be very smart in this blue and I kind of like that and you can see just the sheer amount of work again here all the body panels off and being able to see inside it and basically with the diesel it's, it's less work having a diesel than a steam engine steam engines are way more maintenance heavy and this is well it's a diesel in this but this one is going to be part of the story of locomotives built in the leads they've got over what we saw earlier in the in the engine shed in the engine house quite a few of the older designs of locomotives where this one shows kind of like the not the pinnacle the the end the final development in locomotives built in leads so it's a, a very nice kind of comparison to have this and the stuff that's earlier so it's going to be lovely when this is out coming back this way beyond it <coughs> we've got many more tools shown 
also a hugely important part because as you're probably aware locomotives are heavy so there's this gantry crane which can move around in here for lifting heavy bits and again we've got milling machines here because you know we need to actually be able to make things bearing in mind that so many components here you can't go and buy anymore I mean, you can't just go buy something for Sir Berkeley here if the components knackered you've got to be able to build it yourself now which is amazing one of the things I love about Sir Berkeley is when you look at the frames they're really tiny frames they look almost kind of fragile it's, it's, and this gives you a good idea again of the amount of work that's needed just to maintain locomotives a 10-year overhaul this is this is the kind of state that number six over there was in stripped down to this level everything removed or it the boiler is what is outside i think that this is again to give you an idea this has to happen even with a working locomotive this isn't something that was in scrap condition i've seen this one running every 10 years or maybe 11 you've got to do a strip down and it costs a phenomenal amount of money like even with the boiler taken away from it and the boiler is expensive just the amount of man hours that go into this to lift everything to clean it before you start doing the actual specialized work it's ridiculous and it really makes you appreciate all the hours and the time of the men and women who volunteer to do this i mean there's everything like people like myself who volunteer and give our times to drive locomotives and provide the service for you but the people who are the real heroes are the guys who spend hours and hours in a workshop looking after a piece of well, let's be honest a piece of obsolete industrial machinery but they deserve really our thanks because it's fantastic what they do to be able to maintain something like this but i mean just look at it the fact that the axle boxes have dropped out they're out there the axles they're newly painted all the metal work on the eccentrics over there that's got to be redone the big ends there with the straps around them they've all had to have new work done to keep them in condition that will last another 10 years until it gets another 10 year overhaul and this one is owned by the uh, Vintage Carriage Trust. So it's a beautiful engine to have to go along with the, the Vintage Carriages and their trust. But it's a lovely, lovely piece of kit. Over here again, we have more of the machinery needed. We've got some really decent sized lathes and other specialized machines, which frankly, I don't know what some of these, I have no idea what this thing does. I have no idea. I, I don't know enough about machines, but you need these. And this is one of the big problems that we're now looking at moving forward with heritage and preservation. There's a lot of older gentlemen who worked on these machines in their working lives and now come to railways to volunteer and can put the skills they learned over their careers to use. But how many young people of my age and younger do you know that can actually use a lathe or actually use machines? It's a big problem that's facing us as preservationists is moving forward to having the people that have the skills to be able to make the components and maintain components to keep things like this going. This is number 11. And it's um, like earlier in the video, we saw the Peckett with a cut down cab. This is a similar thing. The foot plate in this is um, basically a kind of that level. And so you step down into it. It's another very weird looking locomotive. And this is a very long term project at the railway, but it will be a wonderful thing when it's done. It's, uh, again, it shows just some of the work required and this is in fully stripped down state, way to have more work. It's got the pistons are out, the rods are out, the ends of the cylinder have been taken off. All of this needs work. I mean, you would need to take, go into that to possibly bore it out if it's got scored. It's a silly amount of work that's needed. And I mean, a steam engine is basically a big bit of Meccano. With all of this will unbolt and can be stripped down into kit components should you want. And it's got a lot of a lot of hours are needed on this to bring it back and again the sheer amount of tools needed is just ridiculous up here in front of us we have one of the brake vans at the railway and this one is particularly important to the railway because the first service that they ran had this so this is a real part of heritage for the railway not just what it's done in its life and it's lovely to see it getting some well a lot of new wood and a lot of attention to bring it back into operational service because yeah it's very important as part of the history of the railway and what they're doing and it was built in derby for the lms in derby in 1926 i think and then over here we've got some other bits so this is a brand new tank for number six and uh, this was part of the 60 grand 
that was needed to do the boiler and also presented it with a brand new tank the original one apparently they started working on it and every time they touched it it just fell apart there's a, a step on the side there that uh, you use to check the to climb up to be able to check the water and the story goes with the original tank the uh, one of the guys put his foot on it like so to climb up and it just fell out it was so rotten it was beyond repair not even beyond economic repair but just beyond repair and this is the cab for number six all painted up already just to be dropped on the locomotive which is actually pretty exciting i mean this is basically there and once this is done and goes on it it will be another step bringing that engine back into traffic which is a very exciting moment having finished our look around the workshop we started to walk towards this another one of the facilities they have here is this wonderful carriage show and this is well that's actually only recently been completed i think in 2018 or 19 this was actually finished and it's a great facility meaning that these coaches which are converted pmvs can be stored undercover in the dry which is a yeah it's great if you store stuff undercover in the dry they don't get weathered and they don't need as much maintenance and also keeps them safe from undesirables so fantastic facility pretty good and we can start safe very sweet and that concludes our tour round of the facilities here at Moor Road. So it's time to have a look at the railway itself. Trains can leave the platform in one of two directions. Generally, services work in a westerly direction, but the railway does expand eastwards back towards the centre of Leeds, which involves going over this road crossing, which has to be manned by a person and then trundles further into the heart of Leeds itself towards the industrial estate. This is the current most easterly part of the railway. This is a barn road. And this, most excitingly, beyond me and beyond that gate, concludes the loop and a connection to the national network. Yes, the Middleton Railway does indeed have a main line connection, which is kind of cool. Now, although this is a run round loop of years of recent times, they have only used this section and used it as a head shunt, not really going beyond the crossing gate behind me. And this section itself isn't actually used that often, mostly only for galas and special events do the trains actually come down here. And it is wonderfully industrial. It really does seem like an industrial railway and the locomotives and the goods trains that they will put on here as demonstrations just fit in here so remarkably well. And it's quite nice to be down this, but remember, you'll only ever see trains running on here if you come on a special event. Having completed our look of one end of the line, we return to Moor Road, ready to board a service heading westbound. And this is the main line, which you as a visitor are most likely to travel along as it heads uphill away from Leeds itself. We're chasing steps towards the colliery of which the purpose of the line was originally built. As we cross the pedestrian crossing, we head towards one of the main features of the railway. And that is the tunnel that passes under the main road. And there is nothing quite as exciting as being on a steam engine as it plunges into the darkness. Standing just at this side of the tunnel. Now, the tunnel over there is actually a new thing. Uh, it was built sometime in the early 70s with the M621 that goes over the top. It's quite weird having a brand new motorway with new cars and steam trains beneath it. So that is a new tunnel put there to allow the railway to continue running up that way. But this that we stood on here, this isn't actually the main running line. Oh no, this is connected to a set of points there and runs up there to, well, nothing. And this is where the Middleton Railway actually started life. They went up there to Clayton's Yard. Now that's where the society originally set up base. They were working and moving stuff from the yard up this way. So this is where the line actually was in use. In the early 80s, in 83, I think, they were asked that to vacate the yard, which meant they had to relocate to a new home, which ended up becoming Moor Road, where they are now. Problem is that at that time, Moor Road was just a straight piece of track running through. So they had just a few weekends to put all the infrastructure in so they could move the entire collection from down here to over there. So today, this is just here to serve as a reminder of where the trust has come, where the Middleton Railway started and where it's gone now. And it's not really, well, it's not really used at all now. It's here just to be kind of industrial and it shows options where it could go. But yeah, 
not much happens here but it's an interesting place if you are here to watch the trains coming out of the tunnel it just makes it feel a lot more industrial with different spurs going off there's a cool little place to be and take pictures from Heading past the spur as we continue our trip along the line, the railway climbs uphill, meaning whatever locomotive you have will have to work hard. It's important to note how much the landscape has changed. Once there were massive spoil heaps lining the railway, whereas now, thanks to a lot of work, it's returned to being mostly green. Continuing on our journey up the line, we pass the newly built sports centre on the right hand side before the railway curves round left into the woods and to our destination, Park Holt. Having climbed our way out of Leeds and seemingly we have arrived into the countryside, just behind me is where the colliery once was. And over there are the ancient woodlands of Middleton itself. And it really feels like you've gone on a journey here. It's a totally different environment to where we started. Down at Moore Road, there's a the sound of traffic, of industry, of life. Up here, this bird song, it's relaxing. It's a totally different, different experience. And it also feels like coming up here, you can now walk back and really sample the whole delights of the run. There's a footpath that basically will take you back down. So you can take a train up and walk back and watch the trains that comes past. There's been a platform here since 1969, although it didn't originally look like this. This is the latest incarnation of it. And on the platform we have, we have some bins and we have some benches. And that is all the facilities that are offered here. Over in a, a that way direction, there's a cafe and in the summer, they'll offer tea and other things at the cafe. So you can wander from here that way and then follow the footpath and wander back that way on the way back. It's quite a nice thing to be able to take the train to here and then wander your way back into Leeds, watching as the trains run you by. It just makes it a nice little line really. And so guys, I've returned back here to Moore Road for the end of this video of a walk around at the Middleton Railway. Now, firstly, it's a railway that I really, really like. In fact, I'm now a volunteer here. And so I can highly recommend coming along and having a look at the railway. It's just, it's really cool. It has a real nice flavor to it. There's still a sense of industry about it, which you don't get on some other lines. And so yeah, full of character, full of lovely volunteers and well worth a visit. I hope you enjoyed this walk around, seeing what the railway has to offer and just seeing some of the stuff behind the scenes that you don't normally get the chance and just hearing a bit about the line. And with that guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let us know in the comments, are you thinking of visiting? If not, well, why not? Give us a like, subscribe if you haven't. And of course, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this one, you want a bit more on the Middleton Railway, then how about clicking down there for the video I did on Sweet Pea or how about clicking over there for one of the other local reviews we've done. And with that, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go and wait for the next train.